morning, guys. Sorry for the delay. Um, you'd think in a tech conference, we'd kind of figure this out already. Um, but it is what it is. Um, so, good morning. Um, who here actually is into data science? I see some. Yes, all right. Um, uh, so, as was mentioned, uh, I am uh, currently a data scientist, also a CTO. Uh, of an HR and fintech company, totally unrelated to data science. Um, uh, and I'm also a life coach. Uh, and uh, for me, data science uh, is really, uh, well, we know it's the future, right? Um, but having been in the, it's a very young industry, right? Uh, and having been in it for the past, say, three or four years, uh, there's one key challenge. Right. One key challenge uh, in data science, that's really, uh, well, actually two, getting people to understand what it is. And second, once they understand what it is, getting people to trust it. Right? Um, so my talk for the day is really, uh, is really around uh, how do we then know, how do we then know uh, whether we should trust a prediction of a, of a machine learning or a deep learning model or not. Right? So, so how do you know? Right, uh, and so as a data scientist, you go, I always get asked questions, right? So I went through my who. Uh, so I've been in the industry about two to three, uh, three to four years. Before this, if you believe it, I was a restaurateur. Um, so anyone, uh, I'm living proof that anyone can actually get into data science. Um, and uh, so it's a lot of self-learning, but also a lot of uh, actual experience. I've worked about two and a half years for an AI deep learning company uh, startup in, based in Singapore called Adatos. Uh, there we really went, uh, we really uh, got to dabble with uh, cutting edge deep learning technology you know, at the forefront of uh, where data science is. Uh, so, uh, levels na tayo ng, ano, ng mga um, rec uh, Amazon recommendation systems, uh, you know, uh, Google image recognition uh, algorithms, etc. Uh, so I got to the really complex stuff of data science, uh, but in that field, we also what really interested me was how data science was applied to business uh, and, and real world, you know, practical stuff that we deal with every day. Uh, and, and to me, uh, the main challenge for that area of application of data science is getting, getting business leaders, stakeholders to even buy into the idea. Why? Uh, primarily because there's lots of trust issues around uh, the predictions that it makes uh, or your models make, right? So what is data science? Uh, well, a lot of you raise your hands, right? So data science, uh, you know, there's a lot of terminology uh, that goes around with it. You know, you, you get big data, you get AI, you get robots, uh, you get machines versus humans. I'm kidding. Um, uh, but uh, the what of it for me uh, personally is that it's data science, it's a broad field and it's anything, right? Because it's, if you take it from the wording, right? Data science, it's anything that uses data uh, to get you to answers, right? Uh, and one of the questions, right, uh, is the how, right? The how, uh, the how used to, if it's really data science and we're not talking just about machine learning and AI and deep learning, the how is actually went through an ev evolution. Uh, if you think about statistics, uh, I'd, say, I'd say that's part and parcel of data science too because in statistics, we do use data to get to answers, right? Uh, and who here are programmers? You know, it's a Python conference, it's, it's programmed, right? Um, and uh, you know, uh, the how has, there's been a shift in the how. Uh, it used to be based on rules and logic, right? Very procedural. Uh, and if you're a programmer, we're used to thinking in this way, right? We tell the machine what to do. It does it, it turns out the result, right? And, and that was also a personal mindset shift for my, of, of mine when I went into data science. Because in data science, you're really allowing the machine to self-learn and discover for itself uh, and tell you how to get to the answers, right? Uh, and it's learning on its, its own through observations, through its own experiences. And, and nowadays, because of the complexity of the algorithms that we deal with, we hardly know what the machine went through to get to the answer, right? Uh, so so there's, lots of, there's lots of times when actually, um, right, 
when, when actually, uh, and this is an example of a deep learning model, right? That the model is too complex. It's so hard to dissect how it got to where it get, gets, gets to, right? Um, and this is the kind of uh, neural networks that we would use, used, to build, used to build for a datos, right? And so the question, the big question always when a machine turns out an answer is why, right? Why do you say someone is not credit worthy? Or why do you say that this house will sell for this much? Or why do you say this stock price will go up? Right, so there's always a big question of why, and in most cases, the machine won't turn out the answer, right? Because of this complexity, it's really hard to get to the why, right? Right, um, and in most cases, this is, what's up, this is what happens, right? You have your input, and there's something called, we call a black, black box, uh, and then the output, you just get the output. The black box is some magic, right? The machine, uh, the machine somehow knows some magic, figures out, figures out a, a network or an algorithm or a model that will get you to the answer, right? So what we're trying to get to is that why. What's inside, what's inside this, um, this black box, right? Um, you know, some cartoons for fun. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and then, you know, sino dito ang nakakuha na recommendation on even your Google Ads or Amazon? You know, sometimes it's really cool that they get us freaky, but sometimes meron talagang totally off, right? There's some totally off uh, recommendations in there, right? Uh, and we want to know why, right? We want to know why. Uh, and, you know, the rest of us, so does the rest of the world. Uh, in a recent survey, uh, 41, just 41.5%, um, I don't know, 41.5% 41, 41 of respondents could not cite a single, a single AI application that they could trust. Right, uh, and these are the examples that were given. Were very, uh, were very common, right? Were very common. Uh, who here would actually ride a self-driving car? Who's confident to, to ride a self-driving car? Yeah, not many, right? Not many. Ako parang I'm still I'm in data science. I'm, but but because maybe I'm there, I'm scared. <laughs> um, but but you know, for me to even be a believer in this, uh, to to have some wariness over riding a. Uh, driving a self-driving car, right? Because there's always a question, paano mo nalaman? Paano kung bigla mo tumawid? Paano, mo, paano kung malalaman na aso yun at, at, hindi, ano, at hindi shadow? Paano? Ganyan. So there's lots of questions around it, right? Um, and, uh, you know, in the same survey, survey uh, just 9% of respondents would trust AI with their financials, right? So there's lots of AI now to do stock predictions. Just 9% of people trust uh, machines to do that. And, and even a smaller 4% trust machines or AI uh, in the hiring process, right? Uh, there's lots of, uh, and because we know uh, if, you're, if you're in HR, if you've ever hired with anyone or actually dealt with anyone, right? Uh, for us, when we gauge someone, there's lots of uh, what we call in data science latent features. Hard to explain, right? Basta alam ko lang, basta okay siya, basta alam ko lang, right? Um, there is a reasoning there. Uh, it's just hard to define it. In the same way, in the same way, uh, a machine would probably find some pattern there, uh, but it's just going to be hard for it to articulate what it is, right? But as humans, right, you have a natural curiosity, right? We always, always, always need to understand, right? Even as a young kid, even as a child, a child will always ask, but why? Why, mama, why? Why, why? It's walang never-ending why, right? Uh, and, and so, uh, we just, we need to be able to reconcile, right, what the answers are to the why, right? Uh, and this is funny, right? So, yeah, thinks the internet is trying to kill him. It's just called machine learning. Right? Um, so, how can we get along, right? So, how can we get along? Why do I term it this way, us getting along? Uh, because really, for me, uh, as, as ubiquitous as machines and AI, uh, are going to become in our lives, and they all, some of them already are. You know, Siri, we talk to Siri, right? It actually is a relationship, right? We, we, we do have a relationship uh, with these machines, right? Well, not always reciprocal, but yeah. Um, as in any relationship, though, as in any relationship. Um, what's, what's key to any relationship? Since ka Valentine's lang. Since ka Valentine's lang. Trust, diba? But bago magka-trust, kailangan may communication. 
right? Kailangan may communication muna. And then once we communicate, right? So comes understanding, right? Uh, hopefully, magkaintindihan kayo pa nag-communicate kayo. And when there's understanding, and then you hear them each other out, you get to accept. Right? Once you get to accept each other's ideas, and that's formed after a while, then trust is built. Oh, di ba? Parang dung wife coach din ako. Um, but, <laughs> but that's true though. It's true though. If you put it in the context of trusting a machine with its predictions, this is the same, this is the same expectations. Right? This is going to be our expectations of any machine. Right? Um, and, and actually, a lot of you would say, why are you going on and on about this? Hindi ba ginagawa na yan? Hindi ba yan nilalabas ng machine? The reality is hindi. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, machines now get to be too complex already. Right? So now, we have the onus. If you're a data scientist or going into it, it's up to us, the responsibility is up to us to always find the answer to why and communicate it. Right? Right? So, hindi pwedeng ganyan lang, na it's too complex. Hindi ko alam, basta it's just complex. We don't understand, right? I can't explain it to you. We have to be able to explain it. Uh, and I personally, uh, I personally encountered this. So, bago pa lang ako sa data science, I was like, you know, galing-galing ng ano ko, we always think accuracy is enough. My machine is 95% accurate, right? We go to a bank. This is one of the biggest banks in Malaysia. Uh, one of the, the few, I think, learning experiences that I had, that's why I'm doing this talk also, a uh, painful learning experience is that yabang namin, we went to this big Malaysian bank, they were, they were getting us to do their credit scoring, results were, were really stellar, ang galeng, uh, but we used, the, the results were very good because we, we used very complex models. One of the most uh, advanced, uh, I guess, deep learning models out there, right? Uh, algorithms. Um, but hindi namin, we forgot, banks are regulated. Banks are regulated, and so for every prediction that they make, they'd have to explain to their customers, bakit, or to their regulators, why they, why they rejected or why they accepted someone. Right? And so tameme kami. Tameme ako noon when I was asked, so how do you then, how do you explain? How do I, how do I tell them? Right? Uh, and so we went into research, researching, paano nga ba, paano nga ba? And then, uh, thankfully enough, thankfully enough, uh, there are tools, and we're going to talk some of, about some of them uh, in this talk. I'm going to share the, uh, with you the, their magic, right? Um, and there are some tools that could help you do that, right? So why, why? Number one, you want to identify and mitigate bias. So totoo lang, because you let the machine learn, it will learn bias, right? Bias in the way you formulate your data, your problem set, your problem statement, but also inherent bias. Uh, in the in what in the world that it is exploring, one of them, and I'm very, uh, I'm very particular about this, is the inherent gender bias on even on text that's available on the net, right? Even on learned text, there's there's inherent gender bias. You're not seeing it so clearly, right? The he would have words like strong, smart, certainly, flashy, right? Uh, and then the she would have words like sexy, gorgeous, comfy, scary, <laughs> fabulous. Um, and if this were, if you think, if, if we were to use this, this kind of, it's, it, it is an actual word to vec, uh, word to vec representation. Uh, that means converting words to vectors. Um, uh, and if you were to use these word to vecs in, uh, in a, let's say, a hiring process, right? Filtering out potential, uh, potential hires. Then I probably I probably be biased towards towards the males, right? Um, so there's inherent bias. But if we were able to explain it, right? If we were able to explain what a machine uh, went through to get to the answer, then that bias would have been surfaced, right? You would have you would have optimized our machine to remove that bias, right? We also need to verify reasoning and account for the context. So here's an example of how. Um, of I think this is one of uh, Google's uh, image uh, image recognitions of how it actually determines what is uh, an electric guitar, what's an acoustic guitar, and what's a, what's a Labrador, right? So one image, multiple multiple objects there. Um, and so if I understand that actually it's this part that makes an electric guitar, it's the riffs that make the electric guitar an electric guitar, right? I'm going to make sure that the Im that I also handle the cases when Say, for example, there's a hand covering it, 
right? Um, or you have different versions of this, right? Or you kind of want to, ex to expound this image, right? So, so you understand the context in which the machine learned it and you're able to improve it pa, right? Again, uh, also for ethical and legal reasons, right? Um, in, in certain industries, uh, like if you're using GDPR now says, uh, GDPR now says, uh, for, the, for at least for the European Union, that all predictions need to be explained, right? Um, and uh, even for any credit scoring uh, regula regulatory, uh, regulatory boards, you need to explain why you're accepting or declining someone, right? Um, uh, also to improve generalization and performance and identify latent features, inter feature interactions, right? Um, so, yeah, actually, when you do understand how the machine is able to uh, get to its answers, sometimes it, it unlocks insights na hindi mo pala na, na alam before na, ah, ano pala, no, related pala yung... So, an example would be, again, in credit scoring, uh, for us, related, ano pala, um, may, 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 may malaking, ano pala, may malaking, um, uh, may malaking contribution pala yung pag, pag, pag kunwari, uh, collecting a check, a PDC check versus uh, cash payments uh, on the branch for, uh, for credit, ang laki pala ng difference ng contribution na isa to the other, right? So, so that at certain insights already in itself, right? So, why? Why do we have to go things, uh, make things more complicated, right? Um, and, and the answer to that is that to improve accuracy, right? Actually, Kung gusto lang naman natin na maintindihan, madali lang eh. We just create a regression line. Right? Kung gusto lang naman natin maintindihan. But, having said that, if your data space, data space is as complex as this, right, a line, this line, is too simplistic to, to get to a, a good enough deal of accuracy. Right? So, actually, kailangan mo to learn something that's more, you know, like, that's more, uh, uh, like a polynomial curve, right? But the polynomial curve is actually very complex, right? Uh, it's, it's more complex than a simple regression line. Why, why is equal to mx plus b lang yun, diba? Um, but this one, you'd have to go through a bit more detail uh, to get to why, uh, w what the coefficients are. And this is just a regression problem, right? Um, actually, if, if you look at the, the um, different kinds of algorithms, these, these are just examples, right? There's really a trade-off. The, the trade-off is um, the more accuracy you want, the more complex the models you create. And the more complex the models that you create, the less the interpretability becomes, right? It's harder to explain it, right? Uh, and so we, we range from something that's intrinsic, meaning nakikita mo pa lang yung formula, yung model, na intindihan mo na, uh, to something more complex called post hoc or, or, or black box models. Right, um, and in this one, you can think of uh, your line, right, your like linear regression, right, and the explanation to that one is you just look at the coefficients. Right? You look at the coefficients, you look at the weight, the magnitude of the coefficient, right, and whether it's positive or negative to understand whether it's positively or negatively contributing to your answer and by how much, right? Sobrang simple. Uh, but here, like I, I showed you kanina with the deep neural networks, you really have to uh, you really have to delve into the network to even have an idea how it went through. And, and actually, no, I don't think any human can possibly do that, right? Um, it, it's just too far complex, right? So we need to demystify this black box, right? Um, and demystifying this black box goes in two flavors. One is uh, you can actually interpret the whole, which, which you call global, or you interpret just a part of it. So interpreting, uh, we call this local interpretation. And local interpretation is when something is predicted, uh, let's say, again, I go back to credit scoring, when someone is predicted as a bad borrower, you're just explaining, bakit siya bad borrower? What variables make it a, 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 a bad borrower? Just for that particular instance. A global interpretation is in general, right? So it's explaining, okay, so in general, uh, what makes uh, someone a, a, a bad borrower is maybe age, occupation, uh, you know, income, right? So that's an in general statement, right? And it learns the whole, uh, it learns all, expl uh, all instances, right? Right? Um, and so, 
here comes the troops to the rescue. So these are the tools that we have been using for the past three or four years to explain the models that we have been creating. Uh, um, and they're not, um, you know, for, for, for me, when we discover these tools, they're really magic tools, provided a lot of the answers uh, to, to a lot of our uh, problems on getting our, our models bought. Uh, sorry, so, uh, sold into by the, uh, no, by, the, by the client, bought by the customer, um, to get people to really believe uh, in data science, right? Uh, if you're so passionate about machines and AI, you, you really want people to, to buy into it. Um, so these were very, very critical for us. Um, this is um, the next few slides might be a bit technical. I'll go through them very briefly. I just want to wow you with, with some of the results that we can create, um, right? So the very, very first uh, explainer uh, is called Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations. Ayan, LIME, called LIME, right? So again, as mentioned, it explains the local. That means it explains for every prediction how it came up with that prediction. And how does that do that? Um, it, if this is your prediction, it actually generates fake, a fake data set around this prediction. That these are your fake data points, right? And it labels it using the model that you just created, the model that was able to predict this, right? So I have a model. It's called a black box model. We don't understand what it is. It predicted this, right? You're trying to understand that. So we create fake data set here, plug this data set into the model, make predictions, put it here, make predictions. And then instead of us learning the whole, we're just learning this. Right? So now, from a very complex problem, it becomes a simpler problem, right? A simpler problem of just fitting a model to this area, right? And that could actually be as simple as a linear regression model, right? From, from a very, very complex model. It can actually be a deep neural network that we feed into this, uh, but it can even end up with a linear regression uh, model that will just give you, again, magnitude and positive or negative contribution, right? Uh, and this is how it works for, the, for images. This one, it's easily interpretable, right? It's just like we break it down, like a puzzle style, right? And so, based on that, it will actually learn, it actually learn uh, for, every, for every part. Um, what we do is we just parang gray out certain areas, gray out certain areas, and, fi and put it into our image, classifi image classifier, right? Um, and how close this image is to the original image that, that, that determines the weight. Um, we won't go into the technical, technicalities of it anymore, but what it does, it actually just boils it down to a regression model. Can you believe it? A regression model uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, weighing each of the interpretable components. Uh, and in the end, the explanation is to determine a frog as a frog, it's really just the face, right? Uh, the snout and the eyes to determine it as a frog, right? Um, and that's how LIME does it, right? And this is LIME text classification. So this is the text we're trying to classify. It's an email, and we're uh, identifying whether it's uh, talking about the topic is atheism or Christianity, right? And it's able to identify text, right? Specific text in that email and say, what's the contribution of that text to, to, towards atheism or Christianity? Really, really cool. Uh, it used to be so hard to explain how a text classifier would actually make its classifications, right? You'd have to go down and then you'd have to count the words. Uh, but but this, is, this makes things very, very easy to understand, right? And here, for a, a simple classification problem, we're predicting whether someone uh, will uh, earn uh, greater, has a capital, uh, has capital uh, will earn greater than 50,000 or less, right? Um, and these are the feature input features. Uh, and it tells you if, how much it contributes towards this person becoming less than 50K or more than 50K, right? Each of the features, whether it's positive or negative and the magnitude. And this is an actual output of the library. Yeah? Uh, you print it, it sh you show it on, uh, if you do Jupyter Notebook, you can e export it as HTML, etc. cetera. Um, and that's the actual output, right? And this is an actual output of an image classifier in, when you put it into LIME, it actually highlights. If I'm classifying a dog, I think I'm classifying a dog and a cat, right? 
uh, it highlights the areas of the dog that makes it a dog, the areas of the cat that actually makes it a cat. Um, and that's, uh, that's Lime for you, right? Um, now, a spin-off of Lime is something called Skater, right? Uh, and again, it's language and framework agnostic, but um, Skater is that because it does global, uh, global explanations also. Uh, so it doesn't just do Lime, it does Lime for local explanations, it does other stuff also, right? Um, so we'll go through that. One of them is what something we call permutation-based feature importance. So it's just looking at features, telling you how important it is. The whole idea behind it is that you actually play around with each variable at a time, each feature at a time. You play around with it, and you see how that affects your model accuracy. Right? If it affects your model accuracy more, that means it's important. If, it, if you play around with it, you shuffle it, you play around with it, tapos it doesn't affect the accuracy, that means it doesn't matter to the model. Makes logical sense, right? Um, so that's what it does. Simple lang. Uh, and how much it affects the accuracy or your whatever scoring metric you're using, that's, that's, uh, that's, that determines the importance. Right? So very, very simple. Uh, and this is uh, it in action. So usually we use feature importance uh, when we also do model comparison. Right? Especially if you understand the domain very well. So for credit scoring, if you understand the domain very well and you have multiple models to choose from, all with very good results, you kind of want to see, um, ano ba dito yung mas nag-fit into what I know of the world? Or mas nag-fit into the number of features I want to use, etc. So, so you can actually use that to inform uh, model selection also. Right? Um, uh, Skater also does partial dependence plots. So partial dependence in the same, um, it's, just, it's just a visual. Right? This is just a visual for you to see uh, how each feature affects uh, another fe uh, affects your result, right? given that everything else is constant. Every, all other features are constant. So, so these are partial dependence plots. This shows you how age affects uh, whether someone earns more than 50K, right? uh, given that all other features are constant. So this is really just for your uh, exploratory data analysis, for you to understand uh, to understand your data, right? So it also does that. And you can do it even in 3D. So you can do a combination of both education and capital gain and how that affects your income, right? So, so this is all, uh, these are all uh, no, out of the box. Like you can, you can use it uh, as a, in, a, in the skater library. Uh, you, can, you can, I think this is just one line of code to do that, right? And it also does line. Uh, it has, uh, Bit of difference on the on the underlying on the underlying algorithm, uh, but it does the same formats as slime. Right? Uh, yeah. Um, there's also something called three surrogates. So three surrogates, um, uh, taking off taking off from the word surrogate, uh, all it does is it really just mimics mimics your complex algorithm, right? It mimics it. Um, so it it mimics it uh, 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 the predictions of a more complex model using an interpretable tree-based model. Kanina kasi sa line, we used just a linear regression, right? This one, boils it down, it copies it, kind of like, oh, sige, how did you come up with your answer nga? I'm gonna try to predict it, ha, but I'm going to use a tree to come up with the same answers as you did so that I, I can explain it to someone. So that's exactly what the tree surrogate does, right? So, so this is the algorithm, uh, short of time, so won't go through it, uh, but that's what I said in the vernacular. Um, so, so it, the output is actually a decision tree, right? Uh, it, it can actually tell you uh, how it, how it uh, even the sequence, so the decision-making process. So this is the difference between uh, a tree surrogate and something like a, a lime explanation that's regression lang. You on one sequence of steps. This one, a tree surrogate can actually give you, okay, what's the line of thinking, right, in coming up with this decision? Because sometimes the permutation or the sequence in which a decision is made is also important, right? Okay, so these are these, these are some pretty cool outputs, right? And if you see this, these are the, the lines of code for you to, to generate these, right? Uh, and these are using different uh, different uh, DNNs. So so this is one uh, one feature of Skater. It can actually interpret deep neural networks, right? Uh, certain certain deep neural networks on Keras and TensorFlow. Um, and explain to you 
uh, what features here make it a panda and what features uh, don't, don't make it a panda and how important each of those pixels are, right? To break it down. So, so when you do image recognition, you can actually now explain how you're recognizing something as something. So maybe this gives you some, some, uh, some degree of comfort uh, in riding a self-driving car. Um, and even on sentiment analysis, it tells you sige, what, which words would allow it to, to uh, actually gives it, um, uh, makes it more, uh, makes it more akin to one, one, one sentiment over the other. Uh, a, a good uh, use case that we actually came up with was that um, we were coming up with a, a sentiment analysis for stocks, right? It's, so it's looking at, the, the use case was to look at uh, uh, news groups, uh, Facebook groups, to look at what people were saying about stocks and predict whether a stock is going to go up or down. Pero dito pala in the Philippines, uh, in, in lo local language, uh, there's, uh, there's a word called bomba, right? So bomba, uh, in, the, in the normal, regular sense, it's a negative thing, right? I wouldn't put it as a positive contributor. Uh, but pag bomba pala yung stock, i ibig sabihin, ano, maganda siya, okay siya na stock. So, so if we hadn't gone through to understand what it was looking at, we probably wouldn't have you know, tweaked our model to allow bomba. Right? or to see Bomba as a positive, uh, as a positive contributor, and things like that. Uh, shape is one of the more complex ones because it relies on game theory. Uh, it relies on game theory, critical concept. So the concept, is, uh, the concept is that the game is the prediction task, right? The gain is, the gain is actually, what we're trying to uh, say here is how much does a feature how much does the feature contribute to the answer? Sim simple lang. How much does the feature contribute to the answer? These are your features. They're called the players. They go into coalitions, meaning groups of features, right? And, um, and they either, they, 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 they have like an import, right? Which is the cat, whether a cat is there or not. Um, they have an import to say, um, pag nandyan yung cat, mag-improve ba tayo? Hindi. And so we do it for all features, right? So parang we, have, we do it for all features. So these are the players. So we have different kinds of teaming co coalitions, right? We, we have sort of different coalitions. And then for each of the features, we add it to each coalition and say, okay, kapag sinama natin this feature, will it improve our team or not, right? And the total of that one, some total of that one will give you how important this particular import, uh, import is. Right uh, to your problem, right? So that's essentially what a shape, uh, shapely value is, right? Uh, and it's a weighted average of, uh, of marginal contribution, how much it adds, right? Uh, and this is an actual output of shape, of shape. Yeah, uh, it's out, actual output on a Python notebook, uh, and it tells you how much it contributes towards the answer, right? Whether it, it makes it higher or lower. Uh, and it's actually a conditional probability contribution. So for each contribution, uh, um, uh, conditional probability, how much does it contribute to the answer, right? Yeah, and that's another example, and this is how we actually uh, produce this result. This is for predicting uh, price values of a house and how, that's, how they're all contributing. Uh, and this is a global explanation, right? Meaning not just looking at one prediction, so for each fee for this feature, it appears to be very important, and you can tell for each value of that feature how much that contributes to the answer. Meaning, pag more positive siya, mas nako contribute siya to the answer, right? And this feature called RM, pag more negative siya, mas nako contribute siya to the answer, right? And that's a direct output out of shape. Uh, and it also is able to shape is also able to explain deep uh, neural nets, and this is classic uh, digits data set if anyone's worked on it. Right? And, and shape is able to explain to us how it defines a two as a two, uh, which pixels actually uh, contributed to that. And the same for, uh, for more complex images using gradient explainer. It explains how it determines this is a, I don't know what kind of bird it is. Um, yeah, this exotic bird and another exotic uh, mammal. I think that's a... Uh, right. And the last, uh, the last of the libraries uh, is one of the most simple. Idea because the whole ethos of it is to make things simple. It's called explain it like I'm five, Eli five. 
Um, and it just is very, very simple. It, it actually is an API. Uh, so you just, it doesn't, uh, it, it supports a lot of algorithms. So you hardly have to worry what algorithm you're fitting into it or you're asking, asking it to explain. Um, and so, I'll just show you the output. So this is like show weights. You just do show weights and it's just going to produce uh, to you uh, the, feet, the, the weights of each of the feature, right? And then show prediction, this is for a local interpretation, for a particular interpretation uh, the, of, uh, of this with an answer, yeah. Right, so, so this is predicting again whether someone is going to earn greater than or less than 50K. Uh, for zero, for the, if it's not, they're not gonna earn 50K or less than 50K, these are the weights and the contributions. Uh, and, and the other for this one, right? So that's also, again, another, if you can see, this is actually an output in Jupyter Notebook, right? Um, and it's just some, a one-liner, uh, one, one line code to say show prediction. Of course, given that you have the model and the results already, right? Um, so to wrap everything up, to wrap everything up, uh, you know, um, I just want to say it's really on us as, uh, as practitioners, uh, whether you're doing data science or something procedural or even statistics, right? We are responsible uh, as, as, I guess, as creators of the machines, right? We are responsible to ensure, uh, ensure that whatever we build is built on foundations of fairness, right? So we check against bias, right? Um, accountability, meaning we can stand by the, the predictions that our machine uh, makes. We can't just say, eh, yun, yun, eh, the data shows it, eh. Ay, bala ka na, ganyan. Hindi naman sinasabi ng data. We should have to be able to hold the machine accountable for it. That means the machine should be able to explain how, how it came up with its answers, right? Um, and of course, uh, ensure reliability and robustness. So, so the more we understand of our, uh, of, our date, of our problem statement, right, of our data, the data set that we're working with, uh, the algorithm, the more we understand of it, the better we're able to improve it make it more reliable and improve its general, generalizability to the greater, let's say, for example, if I was to do credit scoring here, the more I understand of it, uh, I can generalize it na to the rest of the Philippines, maybe. Right? And of course, transparency. Right? Hindi uh, pa pwedeng, we, you know, we, we can't just hide behind the fact that our algorithms are complex. Right? We have to go through the work. It adds another complexity to what we do to explain it, but we have to go through the work so that others are able to see uh, the rationale behind it, right? Um, so um, I hope uh, this gives you some level of confidence in, uh, in a lot of the things that we do uh, in data science. Uh, it also is exciting as a data scientist to have these tools. Uh, for me, the best part of being a data science is that when I see the models being used, right? Actually being used. Um, and so these will be your, one of the most key tools for you to use uh, to, to get your, because otherwise it's just going to be a science project, right? Um, so uh, we started, I started Analytics Inc. here uh, in the Philippines primarily because we wanted to spread the use of data science. Uh, we wanted to educate, we do, we do, we see some of our scholars here, we wanted to educate uh, people into data science. Uh, this is part of the education. Getting people to buy into it is part of the education. So we have to help them ease into the, uh, no, the, uh, the science of the future, right? Okay, so with that, uh, thank you for listening. I know it was technical and a bit long, but thank you for listening. Have a good rest of the day.